Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Heavy Live with Scoopy. I am Brandon Scoopy Robinson, senior writer here at Heavy.com. We are live on all of Heavy's uh, Facebook platforms. We've got uh, Heavy on Celtics, Heavy on Lakers, Heavy on Bulls, uh, as well as Heavy's YouTube channel and uh, my Twitter at ScoopB, which is streaming through Twitter and Periscope. In the building with my new friend, Nate Hinton. from yes, the sir. What's going on, Chief? I'm feeling good, feeling blessed. How you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored, man. You, it, it, it's about you today. Um, the NBA draft is tomorrow, and uh, your name is going to be called digitally. Million dollar question on a scale of one to ten, how excited are you? And on a scale of one to ten, how nervous are you? Um, scale of one to ten, um, after I hear my name called, it's definitely gonna be at a 12 or 13, but right now it's kind of at a seven, eight, like you know. Each hour keep going by, my, my stomach is getting more and more nervous and things like that. But um, I'm not too nervous, too, not too anxious, just because, you know, it's, it's all a part of God's plan. And, you know, whatever is meant is meant, you know, I take it on the chin. So I'm just appreciative of this opportunity and, you know, just excited to, uh, to go up and, and start this new journey. You said in an interview in 2017 to the Gaston Gazette, because you are from Gaston, North Carolina, you said, yeah, so, yeah. turn basketball into my job. Um, I thought that that was significant. You, you went on to say that's one of the things I've done in the last couple months, turning it into a job, trying to have the mindset of a pro, doing a little of the extra work. Um, I, I'm curious to know from your perspective, um, who motivates you? What motivates you? Um, just that statement right there. Um, growing up, my mom used to always ask uh, me and my brother, you know, what, what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to do to grow up? And at a young age, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know what I want to do right now. You know, I'm having fun playing basketball. Sure. And so, um, the older I got, um, you know, because it's not a traditional job where, you know, you typically go to degree, then go to school, X, Y, and Z, then get a job. Uh, it's, it's, you gotta, you know, bet on yourself in every situation. So, um, over years, I just kind of, that kind of motivated me to show, you know, my mom that, look, this is, this is what I want to do and this is how I'm going to do it. So, um, you know, and all the, the things that you instilled in me, is, this is, this is where it comes from. So, and also that hunger, that drive to just to, to be one of the best in the game, uh, put a lot of work in, put a lot of time in. So, um, I think that, you know, that's just what drives me. You are a six foot five wing that led your team in rebounding. You averaged eight point seven per game. What's in your weedy, sir? Oh, uh, actually, I'm really six six. You know, they be putting a uh, six five. I don't know why I'm six five, no shoes, but uh, okay, six six. Uh, it's it's not the weedy, it's the oatmeal. Okay, <laughs> it, it's the oatmeal, the apple cinnamon oatmeal. Uh, it's definitely get that that energizing. Uh, gets me going and. You know, I just got a neck to, to win. It's a competition. Um, you know, competition is instilled in me, and, and, and there's winners and losers. So, you know, somebody got to win, somebody got to lose, and, and I don't like losing. So, when I think of six six swings, um, that can rebound, that can defend. You average one point four steals uh, per contest for the Cougars this season. Names that that I can rattle off off the bat: um, uh, James Worthy. Um, and LeBron James, um, but he's a few inches taller than you. Mm. Who do people say you play like? Um, they they kind of try to figure out what do I play like. Um, honestly, they just kind of see a dog out there. I mean, I don't think you can put a label on you know who I play like. You can kind of uh, give hints at you know Marcus Smart because how he plays, his aggression. Mm -hmm. You know, he's all over the place. Um, just a the mindset of like Patrick Beverly, uh, uh, Montrezl Harrell, like the guys like that. It's not the fact that I play like them. It's just the mentality that I take on with guys like that. And also like, you know, a little bit of Avery Bradley um, and and just guys that, that just take pride in and guard. And I think that just, you know, outside of the size, I think that just to, to have the neck and have that pride of, look, I'm going to stop you. And, you know, I want to, you know, get my team stops and, and energize my team. I think that that's what, you know, the comparison can come from. I find it interesting that you mentioned Marcus Smart and you mentioned Avery Bradley. Avery Bradley is a former Celtic, now a Laker. Marcus Smart is a Celtic. Uh, just in reading different things about you, um, the thing that has been brought up was they said that you met with um, with the Celtics. What were your conversations with them like, if you could share? 
Oh, uh, just just the the, the usual, just kind of get want to get to know me because you know you hear you see the film, you hear from coaches, do your research, do your background, and then you know once you get to know me, you see if that's the real me. But uh, it was just really general question, just kind of trying to trying to pick my brain and see you know what I'm all about, and I'm all about winning. So you know the Boston Celtics have a history of winning, and so you know that's that's kind of what kind of got those guys interested, and you know we'll see what happens. What's the weirdest question that you've been asked in your interview process? Uh, the weirdest question, I think, would be it was to describe the people in the room. There was a lot of people, a group of 12 people. And it was just to see, like, OK, one guy is a is a farmer. Another guy is a former pro and another guy, uh, I don't know, just some random thing that like to do. But it was like 12 people on there. And I'm like, I, I, we're here to talk about basketball. We're, we're here to talk about, you know, we try to get on your team. And, and you're trying to figure out, you know, what, what three guys look like. I'm like, they all look like farmers. They all look like, I don't know, they all have some type of thing with basketball. So I guess they're all play pro ball. But it was just it was just weird to me because it was out of the norm from everybody else. And, you know, that was pretty much it. What's the most asked question that you got during the interview process? The most asked question that I got, um, I think, you know, is it really real? They, they want to know here from me, is it really real? Like what they see on film, um, what they see here from the coaches, uh, is, it, is, it, is it the truth? Like are, are you really, you know, who you say you are, who you portray to be? And that's, that's kind of the thing that I've been hanging my hat on. Like, you know, can you be, can you be a dog? Can you come in and, and contribute? And my answer has been uh, most definitely can. Uh, you know, I'm built for it. And. Obviously, it's going to be a, a road that I have to – a lot of roles that I have to adjust to and a lot of things are different. But at the end of the day, it's basketball. The goal is to put the ball in the hole, uh, rebound, and defend and start another team from scoring. So it's, it's simple. and make the right reads and things like that. So I'm not trying to overthink it, overcomplicate it. I, I can tell that uh, you, you, you made mention of is it really real. And then talking to you, when I started talking about basketball, two things lit up. Your, your eyes lit up. And your whole, you sound like you were in a press conference. You were like, yeah, yeah. like whole debate. That's how I know I really you live it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really live it. It's like, you know, when when I said that, you know, some people make statements and they, you know, they don't remember what they what they said. But, you know, I, I really said that like, I want to make this my job. And so when I said that, you know, only two people really, three people really believed it. And, you know, the more and more time things believed it. But, you know, I believed it. You know, my trainer believed it, Coach Jody Pat. And, and, and my brother believed it. So they, we're the only people that really believed it because I, I really said, like, look, you know, I really want to be a pro. And, and they see the look in my eyes and they know that, you know, that's how it is. So at this point, uh, I, I'm, I'm 10 toes in. I've been 10 toes in and I've been, you know, full force ahead. Like, I'm not I'm not playing around with it. And to seeing the proofs of my labor today is because of the, the groundwork. And you got to speak it, see it, see it and receive it. Yeah. He said what he said. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. In, in the building with Nate Hilton, I, I, I'm curious. Um, the draft process is very different now because of COVID-19 than it was any other time in history. I mean, they, I, I read somewhere that they sent you like guys. They're sending draftees boxes with all 30 teams' hats in there, and then whatever pink team you pick, you take a picture with it on. Did you get? Is that true? Or did you get your package yet? Uh, I haven't got it yet, so I, I don't know about that. I'm my, my team got it, or things like that. Uh, but yeah, but uh, we'll see what happens. What are your fondest memories of watching the draft on TV as a kid? Just just seeing the emotion and seeing how um, you literally can tell um, the the hard work and all the years of 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 kind of the struggle that some of these guys that go through, and that's finally have, hearing their name called and actually experiencing with their family. And seeing the emotion of you know the tr dreams come true, uh, it's not just the oh I want to wake up and go to the NBA. No, it's not that case. It's a you got to put the time in, put the effort in, and a lot of hard work, late nights, early mornings. Like you know, some people are based off talent, but for me, you know, the the role wasn't easy. Um, if you told me three months ago from now, or a la this time last year, I was sitting in my dorm room, uh, just kind of wanting it to be a dream of mine, but never knew how long it was gonna take to get there. And so now. Uh, a year later, um, it, it's here, and, and I'm actually about to walk into it, and, and it's not a surprise to me, but it's just the fact that, you know, everything that took to get to this point, once I said it, you know, in 2017, I want to be a pro, you know, it wasn't easy. That 
everybody, everything around me started fighting against it. But I had to stay down and, and keep working. Nate, tell me something. You um, you talk about just COVID and, and and just sitting in your dorm room and that hunger. I see it. I feel it. But I'm curious. Okay, so the NCAA shut down conference tournaments. There was no NCAA tournament, and then everybody was bored in the house and in the house bored. Um, what do you <laughs> for most? You, you never thought somebody oh, my age would say that. To, no, it's not nah, nah, nah. It, was just, it didn't hit me a little bit later. My fault. <laughs> But not like like in all seriousness though. Like yeah. how how much did COVID and not playing college or ending your college basketball season affect you and your normal routine? Still being a college student, one and two, you, it being your last year. Uh, it was very. Uh, it was very. I was really numb to the the fact that our season was over because I'm I'm still in my mind trying to. Make make sense of it and say, well, hopefully we can kind of try it in in, in the end of March, the end of May, April. But then I'm like, hopefully they can try to figure it out because there's some unfinished business. But um, after the draft, um, I, I didn't know what to feel. And then you know my coaches came to me and you know just asked me, did I want to you know have I been thinking about the draft? And obviously, mm -hmm. I've been thinking about the draft, but it wasn't a mo uh, uh, on my mind at the moment. And so I didn't know how long the, the COVID was going to happen. Um, but once I declared it was, it was just kind of like I, I didn't. I, I just felt more my gear start shifting over to my dream is about to happen. Like I'm really about to go towards my dream, something I, that I always wanted. And you know, I wanted to play. You know, obviously win national championship, final four. You know, play college ball. Obviously, that's it's a part of the process. But at the end of the day, you know, trying to get my mom in that crib is, is more important than anything ever. So uh, I think that just competing and playing at the highest level and actually being a pro, like, that's what I wanted to do. And, and now I'm about to walk into it. And so that's, it just made this last couple of eight months have been really the best months of my life because, you know, every day I'm waking up is a day closer to my life change. Every day is a, a chance for me to get better and, and play against the, the best of the best. So I just think that, you know, I haven't broke my routine. Uh, my dad has a, has a gym at his church, at, at his church. So I had the keys to that and me and my trainer, and, and the, my team, KOD Skills Academy, we've been we've been in the gym, we've been blessed, and and it's just a case of we just been appreciative that you know we had the opportunity, and the resources to do that. So now we just pull steam ahead. I swear, as I'm hearing you talking, all I'm hearing in the instrument, I'm hearing the instrumental, the Meek Mill. I had to grind like this to shine like that. I'm hearing the yeah. piano. Why yeah. are you talking? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I was listening to that album today. Like uh, it just you know just reminiscing. Like I literally like feel like. Uh, I can't talk about what I got. I can only talk about what I'm trying to get. And those those music that you listen to, like, you know, I used to grind like this, grind like that. Like, I really had to do that. And, and so now I, I, I'm, I'm almost there and, and I, I can't just lose that hunger because that's what got me here. That's real. That's real. A few more questions. One, um, the Celtics obviously were the team you met with. Can you name any other teams that you met with besides the Celtics? Uh, I met with the, the the Orlando Magic, the the Clippers, the Timberwolves, the Golden State, um, and Memphis and Charlotte, obviously in Brooklyn, and the Rockets and a lot of other teams that I kind of they're on the list. I, I just it was it's a lot of them. So, so if you're not leaving anybody out, you that's just who you remember. It's a million yeah. and things going it's, on. I told yeah, you. right. You talked about the fact that Meek Mill was the soundtrack, and to, to, you just listening to it the other day. What other music have you has 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 caught your ear throughout this whole process? Uh, definitely, Little Baby. Uh, that's I feel like you know how he came up on QC when I was in high school. He uh, I went to a concert of it was a QC Migos tour, and he was one of the guys that came out in the front in the beginning, and uh, he it was just still daytime when he performed. And I knew who he was, but everybody else didn't really know who he was. But if you listen back to his albums of how he progressed to uh, each album, progressed, progressed. And now he said, my turn. Like, that's that's what I've been listening to the whole time. It's my turn. Like, I'd have had to really since ninth grade, since I said I wanted to be a pro, I, I had to sacrifice and, you know, play other roles and, and do other things for other teams of X, Y, and Z. But now it's my turn. Like, I'm really about to walk into something that's going to benefit me and, and, and the hard work that I put in, I had to play the back end. So it, it's, it's all good. So my turn, you know, it, it's really what it is. Not to be selfish, but I have to be selfish because just like, you know, how he's talking about everything on his album, 
my turn. So tell me something. How often do people tell you that you look like Kobe with a fro? Uh, I've heard it like four times, but I, I don't, I don't really see it. Like that's my favorite player. But like when somebody says it, I'm, I'm get confused. Like I, I don't really see it, but I mean, maybe I had to see a side by side picture maybe. Uh, but I definitely try to develop my mentality like him, but looks, I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's the first today. Okay. I don't think it'll be the last. I think it's the Afro. And then like hearing you talk like your passion. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's a that's a uh, good you know comparison. You know, hopefully I, I can you know live up to the better standard that he did and and try to go farther than he did. That's a big. That's a lot of a lot of pressure if you try to be like Cole, but uh, you got to be the best version of myself. So, favorite two Kobe moments. Um, job's not finished. The job's not finished. That that his uh speech when he said that job's not finished, and also um. Hmm. I think the one where he was talking in the in the uh, in the FIBA the FIBA world it was he was talking he talked to another guy in a different language and LeBron was like chill code chill code but the next play picked up ninety four feet right at you then bang yep. silent the crowd like that's that's cold like just him doing that that's like that's that killer like you just you can talk trash but you, you got to back it up you got to and so just. Seeing that passion and those those couple plays, and obviously the job's not finished. Like right now, people ask me how excited you are. Like I'm excited. I am. I'm extremely blessed and, and appreciative. But the job's not finished. You know, when you win games, it ain't about just winning the game. We try to win championship. You know, in Houston, we used to say like, you know, it ain't about winning the battle. It's about winning the war. Like, don't tell me about a, a battle. We are trying to win the war here. So that's that mentality is is literally me all day every day. Don't don't tell me that. Okay, yeah, we. Won a game, okay. I'm trying to win a championship, that ring, that banners forever. Mm-hmm. Forever, ever, forever, ever. Forever, ever. ever. <laughs> yeah. I know you got a busy schedule, man. I'm gonna let you get up out of here, but um, I wish you well. Um, and keep doing your thing, brother. Pulling for appreciate you. Appreciate you, boss. Appreciate you. I, I appreciate that. My man, you heard it yes, first. Hey, School B Radio uh, podcast. You find this there as well, but. Most first and foremost, you'll find this heavy live with Scoopy on all Facebook channels on the replay. Second round pick, he's projected, but my man is a killer. You, you, we left out, we left out, um, we left out Jimmy Butler. I don't even know why I ain't say that. That's that's the dude I'm I'm be looking at the most. The young Jimmy Butler, the the, the uh, Chicago Bulls with all the vets on the team, like that's the Jimmy Butler. Because you know when I come in the league, you know, they're not gonna ask me, Nate. Yeah, go out there and score thirty, like. I know that they're gonna ask me, Nate, do your job, rebound, defend, and, and be what you've been, but you know, take it up a little better. They want me to get better, but that that Jimmy Butler, that young Jimmy Butler that's just gonna go out there, grind, do the dirty work, and develop. And year by year, I know that I'm a hard worker, I got a history of it, so I'm not gonna get here and change. So, year by year, bit by bit, just bit, brick by brick, uh, just kind of get better year by year, and, and and then eventually, year three, four, five, six, we stamp. And and I strongly believe that because the hard work it's going it got to pay off. No other choice. And then mid range is nasty. Yeah, what we working on that's the bread and butter mid range. They they talking about the three ball. I mean, but you know the, the mid range is the bread and butter. We just working on all aspects of the game. And you know, thing that a lot of teams think that I can't. You know, not really can't, but I just didn't show that I can dribble the ball. But you know, I played point guard in high school, so you know you you can fall for the scout report if you want to, but. Uh, it would just be another opportunity for me to showcase that, you know, I didn't have the opportunity in Houston. Uh, I play my role. But now if you ask me to, can you play with the ball in your hands? Yes, I can. And so that's adding more value to what I already can do, which is rebound, defend, and knock down the three ball. Enough said. We out. <laughs> yeah.